Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're continuing our look at The Last of Us. This is episode seven, Left Behind. Loads of comments on my last video saying, as we're approaching the finale, there's some big medical topics coming up. So let's check it out. As with all the videos in this series, it's gonna be full of spoilers and some gory stuff too. So we join our duo in what looks like a garage here with there's some blood, there's some rope and what looked like blood in the snow in the tracks as they made their way to the shelter. I guess the implication here is that Joel's been dragged by the rope which would not have helped with that bleeding from that penetrating injuries we saw. Thank you to everyone commenting on the last video about whether you should remove the baseball bat or not. What do you guys think? The answer is always no, never remove a foreign body. As we mentioned, you have big blood vessels in that area and that object may be the only thing plugging up the blood vessels, stopping the blood from just spurting out. However, the reason why you leave it in is so that you can get medical help and get it removed in theater in a very controlled environment. So if any bleeding happens, you can stop it straight away, which is kind of impossible in this situation. So I understand some people saying, it has to come out at some point, so you may as well pull it out at the time. I guess in hindsight, the best thing to do in this impossible situation would be to leave it in, get yourself into a place of relative safety, and then to remove it in as a controlled situation as you can. Ah, you gotta help me. Come on. Leave. Ellie's doing a good job here, so using swabs to apply pressure and to soak up the blood. Obviously sterile gauze from a first aid kit is best, but if desperate, just using the cleanest thing you have, like Ellie is doing, is absolutely fine. As the thing that is absolutely gonna kill you first is blood loss. Infection is only gonna kick in hours to days later, whereas the bleeding can kill you in seconds to minutes. And we saw this management ultimately work pretty well when Bill had his abdominal gunshot wound and survived earlier on in the show. But I do think this show is giving unrealistic survivals from this type of injury. Leave. Shut up, Joe. Take the gun. Joe, shut the up! You go. You go. You go north. You go to town. You go. You know what? I think she should probably go. In any medical emergency, you need to know your limits and make sure that help is on the way. In this situation, there's nothing more that Ellie can do. She's kept Joel safe, she's kept him warm, given him a blanket, and she should also make sure there's good compression on the wound too, but now she needs to get help, some kind of definitive management to stop this bleeding. I don't know if this is an option for Ellie, but she could ride back to Tommy's town and encourage a medic to follow her back. But even then you want someone who's experienced in trauma surgery. And you know, most doctors, including myself, wouldn't know how to definitively manage this. And you know, I've assisted in hundreds of surgical operations. What's going on? You've never been what I call well behaved but the last few weeks. Bethany started it. Well, Bethany's in the infirmary with 15 stitches. Good. Okay. Just put me in the hole. I put you. We get a little flashback sequence here and finding out how Ellie has been a bit of a scrapper before. We hear she caused a staggering 15 stitches to one of her housemates. Presumably, the fight went on a little bit longer than just the right hook we see her delivering because 15 stitches is an awful lot. Although worth noting that if her classmate during the scrap fell and smacked her head on the ground, often that can cause pretty big splits in the scalp of the head. Take home message, don't get into fights, just not worth it. Oh God, why? It's so disgusting. <laughs> Why would you do this? In a zombie apocalypse, go that close to someone. In a show literally called The Last of Us, you realize why it's gonna be The Last of Us because people do <laughs> stupid things like nuzzling up <laughs> to a dead person. I'm not sure if this guy 
is infected or not, as this vomit around his mouth could be from a number of different things. But you have to assume he is infected. Like if someone comes into hospital now with shortness of breath and a fever, you have to assume it might be COVID rather than rush in and then find out later once you've been breathing the same airspace as them. It's exactly the same thing here. Keep your distance. This guy must have spent every card he had to get this. No one told him he couldn't mix pills with that shit. I think he knew what he was doing. Okay, so it looks likely he's probably isn't infected. Looks like he's taken his own life. So he's had an overdose with some prescription medications and some alcohol. One of the other signs that he's dead is because his pupils don't react to light. So usually when we're in the dark, our pupils are dilated. So they're bigger to let more light in. And when you shine a light in the eyes, like Ellie's doing here, they would react by constricting. This isn't happening and pupils that are in a fixed dilated position is a sign of brain stem death. Finish him! Finish him! Do not finish me! But then you wouldn't get to see this. Can I just say, and not entirely related to the show, although that's never stopped me before, what the hell is going on with this fatality here? Ah! She eats Raiden, fine, <laughs> we'll let them have that, but then somehow spits out like 50 odd femurs. At a push, this could maybe be all the larger bones in your limbs, so 12 total, but where the hell? <laughs> have all these other bones come from? I'm guessing she might have vomited up several people that she's been eating. <laughs> yes, Ellie. That is a great place to stab a zombie. This is actually the thinnest part of the skull. Uh, the temple here that she's gone for, which is a great place to do it. And as doctors, you have to be very wary of any trauma in that area. So a very good, precise hit by Ellie there. She's obviously been learning her anatomy and therefore she'll know that this area we call the pterion and its weakness is also in part due to the fact it's the junction of four of the skull bones. So the parietal bone, the frontal bone, the temporal bone and the sphenoid bone. Yeah, so I think we saw this coming. So this whole flashback sequence is actually how Ellie got her bite. In this situation, as far as Ellie knows, it's certain death. So maybe people have done this within the game or within the universe. But you could try cutting your arm off. You know, it's trading certain death for very high possibility of death. And given the fact we know if bitten on the arm, it takes two to six hours for full infection, I think this has every chance of working. Definitely not 100%, but with this incubation timeline, it's likely the fungus spreads via the lymphatic system, like a lot of snake venom does. So lopping off your arm before the lymphatics can drain centrally, I think it's got every chance. You obviously then have the massive issue of bleeding to death from transection of your radial and ulnar arteries. And if you're about to die, you're never too sick to have a procedure that could save your life. <laughs> so, I love the heart in this story, but this doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's definitely not impossible. I've seen this type of thing as like a common medical mistake in TVs and movies. Like when you see someone who's been shot and someone removes the bullet and they think somehow that repairs all the damage that the bullet has actually done. Just stitching up the outside is not gonna repair the deeper damage. So if Joel does survive, there is one possible reason. It's a lot of luck, but it's not impossible because I've actually seen it. And so you know, never say never in medicine. In my case, I saw a gentleman impaled on a foreign body. Everything important was missed. The bowels, the blood vessels, everything. Obviously he had scans and was very closely monitored, but in the end, 
all we pretty much did was stitch him up. So he would have just survived on his own. Although what we see here is slightly different as Joel has had significant bleeding and he's also passed out as well. So we had this worry about hemorrhagic shock. But this could maybe be explained by the possibility that this bleeding is coming from the abdominal wall. So the muscles in the abdominal wall, as they've been torn, as that baseball bat's gone through, they're bleeding a lot. So actually, if you put stitches bringing that tissue together, that will help stop that bleeding and encourage a clot to form. So if this is the main and really only cause of bleeding, then LE suturing will certainly help that and certainly save his life. Realistically though, she's probably just closing the top of the wound and the bleeding's gonna be ongoing a lot deeper. So Joel will bleed to death into his abdominal and pelvic cavity. So there you have it, another very much enjoyable episode of The Last of Us. Nice to see Ellie as well, taking her first steps into the medical profession. So I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this episode. Anything I've missed or any questions you've had, leave me a comment down below. I love reading them. I know everyone in the community does too. And I can also address stuff in the future videos too, because we only have two left now. So heading into the big finale. And as all YouTubers say, please like this video and consider subscribing too. Thank you for all the continued support on the channel. I hope you're all well, and I'll be back soon.